Hello everyone, let's explore the spotted eagle ray and discover its taste in Japanese cuisine. The spotted eagle ray, scientifically known as Aetobatus narinari, is a stunning marine creature that captivates the imagination with its striking appearance and graceful movements. This ray is identified by its large flat body adorned with white spots on a dark blue or black background, resembling a starry night sky. Its wingspan can reach up to three meters, allowing it to glide smoothly through the ocean, often seen soaring near the water's surface. Living in the warm waters of tropical and subtropical regions worldwide, the spotted eagle ray is commonly found in the Pacific and Atlantic oceans, particularly around coral reefs and sandy bays. It is a solitary traveler, sometimes forming small groups, and is known for its impressive jumping ability, occasionally leaping out of the water in spectacular displays. Beyond its beauty, the spotted eagle ray plays a vital role in marine ecosystems. It primarily feeds on mollusks, crustaceans and small fish, using its specialized snout to dig into the seafloor and locate hidden prey. This feeding behavior helps maintain the balance of benthic communities, contributing to the overall health of coral reefs and coastal environments. In Japanese cuisine, while the spotted eagle ray is not as commonly featured as some other seafood, first, let's look at how this ray is caught. Although the spotted eagle ray is not a primary target for fisheries, it is occasionally caught for various reasons. The ray often inhabits coral reefs and shallow waters, where fishermen frequently catch other fish species. When using large nets or bottom trawling gear, the spotted eagle ray may inadvertently be caught along with target species. After being caught, it is sold at local seafood markets for preparation into specialty dishes. Processing and preparing a giant ray like this requires skill and precision. The spotted eagle ray has very thick and tough pectoral fins, but with a sharp knife, the chef can easily cut through. The ray's fins primarily consist of cartilage, a type of connective tissue that is softer and more flexible than bone. The flesh of the fins is white and red, and once the fins are cut, they are divided into smaller pieces for easier cooking. Beneath the cartilage, the pectoral fins contain soft muscle tissue, which is usually smooth and tender, although not as prominent as the flesh from the body or tail fins. The chef will also peel off the ray's thick and tough skin, which is a significant challenge but can be done with skill and experience. Next, the ray's pectoral fin meat is cut into thin slices and marinated with a mixture of soy sauce, cooking sake, minced garlic and grated ginger. After marinating, the slices are evenly coated with potato flour before being deep fried in hot oil. Alternatively, the fin meat can be simply battered with a bit of salt and flour and fried. Each piece is deep fried for about five minutes until the coating turns a crispy golden brown. The flavor of this dish is sure to surprise anyone with its delightful taste.
What about the internal organs? Most of the internal organs of this ray, such as the liver, stomach and intestines, are edible. Particularly, the liver is considered a delicacy and is often prized for its rich, creamy flavour. After removing and cleaning the organs, the liver is cooked along with the remaining fin meat. Once cooked to the desired level, soy sauce, ginger and brown sugar are added to enhance the flavour, resulting in a rich and savoury dish. The spotted eagle ray can be prepared in various ways, but sashimi is an essential option. To prepare sashimi, the freshest meat is selected, free of any fishy smell. It is sliced thinly and enjoyed with wasabi and soy sauce. The meat of the spotted eagle ray is not only loved for its unique flavor, but also for its rich nutritional value. Thanks to its perfect combination of protein, healthy fats, vitamins and minerals, the spotted eagle ray provides a balanced source of nutrition, helping to maintain a healthy body and contributing to a wholesome diet. Today, join me to discover how Japanese fishermen hunt and handle shark carcasses. Sharks are animals at the top of the food chain and are considered cold-blooded killers of the sea. Currently, there are more than 400 different species of sharks living in seas around the world, and 30 species of sharks are dangerous to humans. It is estimated that the total number of sharks in all seas could reach 1 billion. This means, for every seven to eight people, there will be a shark. In 2023, there will be about 69 shark attacks on humans, including 10 attacks that killed the victims. But do you know how many sharks are killed every year? By far, the most threatening predator of sharks is humans. Shark meat is becoming increasingly popular as a food, and manufacturers also use shark cartilage in some medicines. In 2008, nearly 100 million sharks were killed by humans through commercial and recreational fishing. In particular, Japan ranks ninth among shark fishing countries with an output of 20 to 30,000 tons. Japanese fishermen hunt sharks for many different reasons. One of the main reasons is to obtain shark fins, an important ingredient for shark fin soup, a deluxe and expensive dish in many Asian cultures, a symbol of wealth and status. Shark meat is also consumed in many dishes, including traditional Japanese dishes such as salted shark and grilled shark. Shark liver oil, which contains the compound squalene, is used in many pharmaceutical and cosmetic products. Shark skin is used to make leather products such as shoes, bags and other items. It can be seen that the effective use of all parts of the shark is always promoted in Japan. However, sharks are not the main target of the fishery. In some areas such as Okinawa, Japan, fishermen witnessed schools of sharks attacking them, stalking the waters near their boats and tearing apart their loot. In an effort to reduce the problem, the government launched an extensive eradication program and paid participants. So how are sharks handled? Normally, sharks will be destroyed by cutting them into small pieces for fishing bait or food. The treatment process begins by draining the shark's blood, 
because it was still alive after being brought back to shore. Regular knives were ineffective at the moment, so they used halberd instead. They will then measure the shark's weight and record it to receive payment. The shark's fins will be cut off first. They are banned from being traded in Japan, but people here are allowed to use them as food. In Japanese restaurants, most fukuhir soup does not use real shark fins. They use ingredients with artificial flavors, such as rice noodles. Only expensive and luxurious places have real shark fins. After cutting off the fins, they will divide the shark's body into smaller parts, a process that takes a lot of time and effort. Unlike regular fish, sharks don't have the bones running across from the spine to the dorsal fin. Instead, they only have a spine. Therefore, when cutting sharks, they will cut into the spine instead of cutting along the spine like other fish. The shark's internal organs are processed immediately. They are covered by a thick and sturdy membrane. With the giant size of the shark, its liver alone weighs up to 50 kegels. Next is to remove the intestines. This is the part where the shark's waste accumulates. Sharks excrete urea through their skin and urine, and urea can break down into ammonia, causing a strong odor. To cut a shark weighing more than 400 kilo will take a lot of time and the amount of meat they collect will be about 250 kilo. To avoid waste, they often share it with everyone in the neighborhood. They will cut shark meat into smaller pieces of only about 10 kilo for easy carrying. Shark skin is rich in collagen, a protein that can be used to make gelatin or other products. While they are edible, they are not usually consumed directly like other parts of the shark. Instead, shark skin is often used in traditional dishes after going through special processing. Shark meat has a soft and moist texture. Before cooking, it is necessary to reduce the moisture by sprinkling a little salt on top and patting dry with paper. They will then be cut into thin slices and covered with flour. Next, add the flour-coated meat to the eggs and panko flour. Maybe you can guess what it is, right? It's deep-fried shark meat. They will be deep fried for about five minutes until the crust is a beautiful golden brown color. Next is a special part of the shark. Can you guess what this is? They are the anal fin along with a part called the cloaca. In sharks, cloaca plays an important role in the mating and giving birth process it is also the place to receive products from the digestive system, urinary system, and reproductive system. To remove the bad smell, they will add salt inside and also on the surface. Next, put it on the grill and wait for it to cook. The remaining portion will be skinned and seasoned with salt and pepper, then coated evenly with flour before being fried. Finally, it's deep fried and it's hard to tell if it's done or not. Shark meat has a mild flavor with a hint of sweetness. It is highly appreciated and some people even compare its taste to chicken. However, we all know shark meat contains high levels of mercury, especially large sharks.
but why do Japanese people still eat them? Some people asked me this question in a previous video. According to current recommendations, mercury poisoning can occur if you eat more than 200 grals of shark meat a week. And in the Japanese diet, they usually don't eat a lot of shark meat at once. Diamond squid is one of the largest and most impressive squid species in the ocean. With a body length that can reach 1.5 meters and a weight of about 30 kilgas, this squid species is distinguished by its elongated shape, diamond-shaped body, and large pair of fins extending from head to end, creating a soft and flexible appearance. The special feature of diamond squid lies in its unique biological characteristics and habitat. This species of squid often lives in deep sea areas where sunlight cannot reach, making studying and observing them difficult. Diamond squid has the ability to change body color for camouflage or communication using pigment cells called chromatophores. This not only helps them avoid predators, but also creates spectacular light shows on the seabed. In Japan, diamond squid is called sodeka, comes from the thick, sleeve-like pillars that support the protective membrane of the third arm. They are targeted by the growing fishery near southern and central Japan due to their firm flesh and attractive flavor. The main fishing grounds are in the Sea of Japan, Okinawa Prefecture, and Kagoshima Prefecture. They are usually caught from October to November. Their price will be around 700 to 800 yen. The first auction of 2024 was held on July 1st at the Miyakojima Fisheries Association. A squid weighing 6.7 kalalas was auctioned for 33,500 yen six times more expensive than the usual price. Now join me to see how they process this squid into sashimi. The Japanese process of preparing diamond squid begins with cleaning and removing unused parts. They made a straight cut through the skin just above the squid's abdomen and removed the squid's gladius. Its internal organs will be carefully separated along with the head, especially to avoid breaking the ink sac, otherwise handling will be very difficult. They will then process and remove the squid's internal organs, which contain many bacteria and toxic substances so are often not used. The same goes for squid eyes and beaks. They have no nutritional value and are quite hard to process. After filtering, the squid head will be cleaned by soaking in salt for about 10 minutes and rinsed. Next is to process the squid body they will cut the fins first, with a structure consisting of muscle fibers and connective tissue, so cutting is also extremely easy. The squid's skin, also known as mantle, will be peeled off immediately afterwards. However, before that, they will cut off the collar part because it is very hard and the flavor is not suitable for sashimi. To make it easier to peel diamond squid, the Japanese often divide the squid body into smaller parts, then cut slightly at an angle near the skin and gently pull the skin off. The same goes for the thin inner membrane. The feeling when they peeled them off easily made me feel very satisfied, but it also took quite a while to finish handling this giant squid.
After processing, they often cut them into small pieces for ease of processing and store them in the freezer. Freezing and defrosting foods often loses their flavor, but the opposite is true with diamond squid. When eating fresh squid, their texture is quite hard and flavorless, but after freezing, they will be much sweeter and tastier. Finally, cut the squid into thin slices of sashimi and enjoy with soy sauce and wasabi. Do you prefer to eat sashimi from fresh or frozen squid? Please let me know your thoughts. I wonder what diamond squid will taste like when grilled. This squid has quite thick meat, also known as calamari, that Japanese people will often cut it in half. Next are alternating straight and diagonal lines. This cutting technique is called score squid, which helps the squid meat absorb more spices when marinated. The sauce to marinate the squid includes four spoons of Korean miso, four spoons of gochujang, minced garlic and ginger. Then add a little taramirin and mirin to the sake. Add an equal amount of momarin and finally add some sesame oil and sesame seeds. Mix the sauce mixture with the squid well until absorbed and marinate them for about 24 hours. After 24 hours, they will grill the squid on charcoal and cut it into bite-sized pieces. From color to taste, everything is perfect like enjoying at a high-end restaurant. Diamond squid is a nutritious seafood with many health benefits. It provides high-quality protein, which helps build and repair muscles. Have you ever heard of a giant fish as strong as an ocean warrior? That is the giant trevally fish, a powerful predatory fish that surprises everyone with its size and strength. But what really shocks us is the way Japanese cuisine, with great sophistication and artistry, turns this giant fish into wonderful, unique, and incredibly attractive dishes. Let's explore the surprising journey from sea to dinner table in today's video. Giant trevally, Caranx ignobilis, also known as lowly trevally, barrier trevally, ronin jack, giant kingfish, or ulua, is a giant fish in the family Carangidae living in tropical and subtropical waters of Indian Ocean and Pacific Ocean. With a size of up to 1.7 meters and a weight of more than 80 kilos, giant trevally is distinguished by its strong oval body, sloping head and strongly forked tail. Their color is usually silver with a darker back and brighter belly. Sometimes large ones even have a characteristic black color. Giant trevally inhabits a variety of marine environments, from coral reefs to lagoons to the open ocean, and can be found at depths of more than 100 meters. As predatory fish, they feed on small fish, crustaceans, mollusks, and sometimes even seabirds, with aggressive hunting skills and powerful swimming abilities, often hunting alone. In Japan, this species is called In Japan, this species is called GT, short for giant trevally. In sharp contrast to white trevally, 
whose commercial popularity is based on its delicious taste, Giant Trevally is not highly appreciated in the culinary scene. Their meat does not have the delicate flavor and softness that the Japanese often prefer, and is even quite tough and has a pungent smell, not suitable for sashimi or sushi dishes, which require freshness and mild flavor. Their price is relatively low, and in Okinawa it seems to be traded for 400 to 500 yen per kilogram. Giant trevally is not a naturally poisonous fish. However, like many other marine fish, it can cause ciguatera poisoning if eaten, a toxin produced by marine algae of the genus Gambiadiscus. Large fish that eat a lot of smaller fish that contain ciguatoxin can accumulate the toxin in their bodies. Ciguatera poisoning cannot be eliminated by cooking or freezing fish, so consumers need to be careful when eating large fish from tropical and subtropical regions where Gambiadiscus algae thrive. Although not all giant trevally fish have the presence of this toxin, consuming it should be done carefully and with clear source information. Surely now you are wondering, why is it in the category of videos about Japanese cuisine? Because Japanese cuisine is so diverse and rich, people here also have a passion for experiencing and consuming many different unique fish species, including giant trevally. So let's see how they prepare this fish. The preparation process usually starts with removing the giant trevally's scales. Their scales are quite large and hard, making removal more difficult and time-consuming than other fish species. To remove them, you need to use specialized tools to save effort and time. After removing the scales, the chef will cut open the giant Trevally's abdomen and remove the unused part. The giant Trevally's internal organs are covered by a solid membrane that connects the organs to the gills, so pulling them out is quite difficult. Chefs need to be careful when handling them, because if they break, the fish will have a very unpleasant odour. Giant Trevally's internal organs contain ciguatoxin and parasites. Although they can be eaten, they need to be prepared and cooked properly to ensure food safety. But especially for the liver, where there are twice as many toxins, what we need to do is eliminate them immediately. To taste the meat flavor of this fish is not easy. Next is cutting the fish head with an extremely strong bone structure, it is necessary to use knives that are large and sharp enough to cut it, even scissors and pliers. And now comes the next challenge, giant trevally fillet. The chef places the knife close to the spine and starts cutting along the structure of the bone down to the tail. The bones of this fish are quite rough, especially on the edges, making the process of separating the meat from the bones quite difficult. Finally, when peeling the skin of giant trevally, chefs often cut off the collagen fibers connecting the skin and meat of the fish because their texture is quite tough and not suitable for the dish.
giant trevally fille will be cut into thin slices of sashimi by the chef and eaten with wasabi and soy sauce. They can also be prepared into a variety of dishes such as grilled, fried or stewed. Although giant Trevally's meat has a tough texture and is often considered difficult to eat, it is still considered a rich source of nutrients and health benefits. However, this is probably a fish species that is only suitable for those who want to experience new and unique culinary sensations. Have you ever seen this unique fish? Its name is Humphead Rasa. In Japan, this fish is considered a rare and luxurious dish with a value of up to thousands of dollars each. So how can Japanese chefs prepare this giant fish? Let's explore with me. Humphead rasa, also known as Chalinus undulatus, is a fish with a striking appearance that mainly lives on coral reefs in the Indo-Pacific region. Humphead rasa can reach lengths of up to 2 meters and weigh up to 180 kilos, making them the largest members of the Labridae family. They are also known as Napoleon Rasa due to the characteristic hump on their forehead, reminiscent of the famous three-cornered hat worn by Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte. An interesting thing that you probably don't know is that all humphead Rasa are born female. When they grow up, some individuals will change gender to become males. a protogenous hermaphrodite, they reach sexual maturity at the age of five to seven years and change sex at the age of about nine years. In Japan, humphead rasa is commonly distributed along the coast of Ryukyu Islands and Wakayama Prefecture. Because of their impressive characteristics, they are often kept in public aquariums in Japan. When fed regularly, they become extremely friendly and familiar with humans, creating a wonderful experience for those participating in scuba diving activities. However, with wild fish that have never been fed, they often keep their distance and tend to be more wary of humans to protect their territory. Humphead Rass's meat is prized for its tender white texture and moderate fattiness. Their flavor is extremely delicious, especially when prepared by Japanese chefs. Are you curious how chefs choose the best quality humphead Rass? With strict and meticulous standards, they often check their appearance first. The freshest humphead wrasse will have transparent eyes and their body is firm and elastic. Especially check their body signs from skin lesions to smelling to see if there is a fishy odor or not. Such careful selection is not only to ensure the highest quality when serving diners, but also because the price is very high Surely no one wants to throw a few thousand dollars out the window, right? The process of preparing this giant fish often begins with the chef removing the scales of the humphead rasa.
They have a fairly hard and firm texture, and the outside is covered with an oily layer like slime. Removing the scales of humphead wrasse is not easy. Its slime is a big challenge for chefs when manipulating. Using a knife to remove its scales is probably not the best way. This is quite time consuming and energy consuming for the chef. In some places, chefs will use hot water or fire to make the scales peel off more easily but that method is not suitable when making sashimi. Perhaps you are familiar with how Japanese chefs prepare fish, right? From removing the scales, then removing the internal organs and unused parts, such as the fish's fins and head. But this species of humphead rasa has its own unique path. After removing the fish scales, the chef will proceed to make sashimi instead of processing it the old way. The chef starts by cutting straight lines to divide the fish's meat into small pieces for more convenient processing. Then, the chef proceeds to fillet the fish, separating the fish meat from the bones carefully and meticulously, ensuring these valuable pieces of meat will not be wasted. The meat of humphead rasa, when just looking at it, will make many people think that it is mushy and watery. But on the contrary, you have to directly touch it to know. They have a quite firm texture and are a perfect ingredient for sashimi. Once the fillets are separated, the chef will cut them into fresh sashimi slices and serve them to the guests. Sashimi Humphead Rasa will definitely surprise you with its explosive flavour. The texture is chewy but still retains moderate moisture. They do not have a strong flavour like other fish. They are even quite easy to eat and are loved for their natural sweetness. Perhaps the word delicious is not enough to describe this wonderful dish. And now is the part to discover the secret inside the body of the humphead rasa to see what's special about them. If the step of removing their scales is the most time-consuming step, then processing their internal organs will be the most labour-intensive step. The inside of this fish's stomach is empty and smelly, due to the water pressure causing its internal organs to be pushed above its head. The chef needs to chop the head off, but that's the point. Its bone structure is extremely hard, knives cannot penetrate it, even a hand saw must be used. Have you ever seen a fish with unique blue internal organs like this? Humphead Rass's internal organs, especially the liver, are not only rich in nutrients, but also popular for their special flavor when eaten. However, if you are a person who is sensitive to the scent of food, think carefully before trying it. Because the Humphead Rass's liver has a foul smell, so bad that just eating a piece can cause your breath to knock out people around you. The meat of the humphead rasa is not only famous for its delicious taste, but also provides many significant nutritional benefits. Rich in protein and low in fat, their meat aids in building and maintaining muscle, making it suitable for those on a diet or wanting to maintain weight. In particular, humphead rasa meat contains omega-3 fatty acids, which help reduce inflammation, improve brain function, and reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease.
Today, we will delve into the journey of hunting and processing whales, a traditional dish of the Japanese people known for its intricacy and meticulousness in preparation. Have you ever wondered why Japan has a tradition of whale hunting and how the process of handling these giant creatures unfolds? Surrounded by oceans on all sides, Japan has utilized whale meat as a vital food source since ancient times. The seas around Japan, serving as migratory routes for whales and a resource-rich environment for numerous whale species, have strongly influenced Japan's whale-eating culture. The Japanese have hunted whales since prehistoric times. During the Jomon period, around 6,000 years ago, stranded whales were seen as a blessing from the sea. Historical artifacts from the Jomon period suggest that ancient Japanese might have actively pursued whaling at this time. Besides being used as food, inedible whale parts, such as bones, were effectively utilized for crafting pottery. With the introduction of Buddhism in Japan during the Asuka period, the consumption of meat was generally prohibited, leading people to rely primarily on fish for animal protein. At that time, whale meat was considered seafood similar to fish, and thus a valuable ingredient. By the early Edo period, organized whaling operations began. With the development of an effective method known as net whaling, the supply of whale meat increased significantly. In Edo, people commonly ate whale soup with salted whale skin after the Susuharai ceremony on December 13th, the end of the year. The book Whale Meat Cho Ami, published at the end of the Edo period, introduced methods for preparing different parts of the whale with up to 70 different parts used. In the 19th century, with Japan opening up to the outside world, its whaling techniques continued to evolve and modernize. Japan began using steamships and harpoons for larger scale whaling. This development marked a transformation in Japan's whaling industry, making the country one of the largest whalers in the world. Throughout the 20th century, whaling became a significant industry in Japan. Whales were used for various purposes, from food to oil and other byproducts. After World War II, as Japan was rebuilding, whale meat became an essential food source, providing protein to the population during tough times. As a result, by around 1950, with beef prices falling and fresh fish prices at their lowest, whale meat began to pile up, with Taiyo fishing storing over 930,000 kan Hana 1 kan, 3.75 kilam, in cold storage, equivalent to about 300 million yen. The company developed the market and successfully exported canned food to Taiwan. Production continued to increase significantly, reaching 138,000 tons in 1958 and peaking at 226,000 tons in 1962. From the 1970s, animal rights and environmental movements began condemning whaling, arguing that it threatened the existence of many whale species and harmed marine ecosystems. In 1982, the International Whaling Commission, IWC, imposed a global ban on commercial whaling, forcing Japan to halt large-scale whaling activities. In 2018, Japan officially withdrew from the IWC and announced it would resume commercial whaling from 2019, but only within its own waters. At that time, Bride's whales would be the primary target of whaling activities. By May 2024, Japan started hunting fin whales after five years of commercial whaling. Japan caught a total of 294 minka whales, Bride's whales, and SA whales last year, said the fisheries agency which currently limits commercial whaling to the three relatively minor species.
Japan's whaling ship stands out with a tonnage of 9,299 tons and a length of 112.6 meters. Specifically designed to operate effectively in remote and harsh seas, whaling vessels can undertake long voyages to cold areas such as Antarctica. Equipment on board includes the most advanced technology and equipment to carry out the entire process of catching and processing whales right at sea. From hunting whales with specialized fishing gear, ships have equipment to process and butcher whales immediately after capture, ensuring the preservation of product quality in modern cold storages on board. The ship is also equipped with tracking and research systems to collect data on whale species for scientific purposes. However, the ship's activities are not only aimed at research, but also have economic purposes, processing whale meat to supply the Japanese domestic market. The first step in this journey is a profound understanding of marine geography and the behaviour of whale species. Experienced sailors will rely on cues such as ocean waves, geographical environment and traces of fish to determine their potential locations. When arriving at waters where whales are likely to be present, the ship uses radar and sonar to detect whales underwater. After detecting the target, the ship approaches and uses harpoons equipped with explosives to catch the whale quickly and with minimal pain. When whales are caught, all attention and focus are directed towards hauling them onto the ship. No matter how large and powerful the target may be, the crew always prioritizes safety, so they must coordinate closely and use collective strength to overcome any challenges. After the whale is safely brought aboard, the sailors begin the process of processing the catch. Each step, requires certainty and precision, from preparing tools to sorting and butchering each part one by one. The first step in butchering the whale is removing the thick layer of skin and blubber. You might think these two would be discarded items, but no, both are valuable fatty and omega-rich parts that can be used for fatty and rich sashimi dishes or rendered over a golden fire to enhance their distinctive flavour. The next part, cut after the skin and blubber, is usually the bone and muscle of the back or fluke region. This is the meat part that can be easily accessed and processed immediately after cutting off the skin and blubber. The bones and muscles of the back or fluke region can be used to make whale broth, adding flavour and nutrients to soups such as hot pots or broths. Whale bones can also be used to produce bone-derived products such as gelatin or bone meal used in the food and pharmaceutical industries. After cutting out the meat from the back region, the butcher will continue cutting from other parts of the whale's body, including areas like the belly, underbelly, and any other meaty parts if present. The meat cutting process needs to be done carefully and precisely to separate the meat 
without damaging its structure and ensuring food safety and hygiene. In the precious meat parts of the whale, each part brings a distinct and enticing flavour. Whale meat can contain vitamins such as vitamin B12, vitamin D, vitamin E, and minerals such as iron, zinc, and selenium. These vitamins and minerals are essential for various functions in the body, including growth, immune function, and nerve function. The chunks of meat and fat were then placed into styrofoam containers where they were preserved with layers of ice. Using foam boxes and ice helps keep meat fresh during transportation from ship to place of sale. Have you ever tried whale sashimi? Whale sashimi is a unique and rare dish, considered a specialty in some regions of Japan Whale meat for sashimi is often taken from the best parts of the whale, such as the back and belly. The whale meat slices are thinly sliced, have a characteristic dark red color and smooth texture. The flavor of whale sashimi is often described as rich, slightly fatty, and has a bit of natural sweetness. Whale blubber for sashimi is cut into thin slices and is usually white or ivory in color with a soft and smooth texture. The flavor of whale blubber is very unique, often described as greasy, slightly sweet, and has a bit of a natural sea taste. In Japanese cuisine, perhaps we will more often see images of swordfish or marlinfish being prepared than sailfish, right? Although not popular, sailfish still has a special place in culinary culture here. Let's explore with me how the process of processing sailfish into unique delicious dishes is. Sailfish's scientific name is Istiophorus, belonging to the family Istiophoridae. They are considered one of the wonders of the ocean, outstanding with their unique appearance and ability to swim as fast as the wind. With a high dorsal fin like a brilliant sail, an elongated fish body with a sparkling blue color and a shimmering silver belly, the sailfish not only attracts the eye, but is also a speed warrior, able to reach speeds of up to 110 km to h, making them true racers of the sea. They inhabit tropical and subtropical waters around the world, from the Atlantic, Indian and Pacific Oceans, and are often found near the surface of warm water. Sailfish are skilled hunters, preying mainly on small fish such as sardines, herring and mackerel, and even squid and shrimp. An interesting fact about sailfish is their ability to change colour to communicate or attract prey, which further adds to their magic and mystery. With all these outstanding characteristics, it is not difficult to understand why sailfish is honoured as a symbol of strength and speed in the ocean world. This makes them the target of many sport fishing competitions, where passionate fishermen challenge themselves to conquer this fish. Not only has its sporting value, 
sailfish meat is also popular in Japanese cuisine, bringing unique and diverse culinary experiences. In Japan, sailfish fishing usually begins in the fall, which is the season when their meat quality is considered the best. On beautiful small boats, the fishermen are as persistent and talented as artisans, ready to set sail every morning, starting a journey to conquer the Pacific Ocean. With professionalism and traditional know-how, fishermen are not only brave, but also patient in confronting the challenges posed by the ocean. They know every deep sea where sailfish often appear, combining experience with skilled fishing skills to face the strength and speed of this fish. After completing their sailfish catch, the Japanese sailors returned to port with a sense of satisfaction and pride in their achievements. Small boats rowed toward the shore, each carrying on it large sailfish that had been caught in the early hours of the morning. The sailfish are then brought to local fish markets, where consumers can choose and buy fresh, quality fish. With rich experience, Japanese chefs always have their own ways to choose the best quality sailfish. They not only choose sailfish based on size and weight, but also evaluate the meat condition and freshness of each fish. Each choice, every small detail, is carefully considered to ensure that the final dish will bring the most perfect culinary experience to diners. The process of preparing sailfish by Japanese chefs often starts from removing the tail and head because their structure has a high bone ratio so they are not commonly used. Next is to remove the sailfish's scales. They have a layer of scales covering their entire body with a quite sturdy structure to protect their skin and body when moving. Removing them is difficult work. Chefs can choose to use tools to scrape off the scales and rinse the sailfish again. However, most chefs will choose a more convenient way. They will fillet the fish first, then remove the skin of the sailfish, including the scales. Next is to remove the sailfish's internal organs. Like other fish, they contain toxic substances that will be dangerous for people who eat them if they do not know how to handle them. When removing internal organs, chefs also need to be careful to avoid breaking them, which will affect the quality of the meat. Are you wondering why the sailfish's giant dorsal fin is still there and hasn't been removed? Because they have a thorn-like structure with sharp bones and spines with high hardness, removing them is difficult and extremely time-consuming for chefs. They often fillet sailfish first to save time and effort. The fillet process begins with the chef using a knife to cut a straight line from the belly to the tail of the sailfish. The knife is placed close and cuts along the bones of the fish then separates them carefully to avoid wasting fish meat. Sailfish bones have a completely different structure than other types of fish. Their hardness cannot be cut with regular knives, so chefs need to use a saw. However, using a saw will cause sawdust to stick to the meat, even the small scales of the sailfish. They can penetrate the flesh and cause problems when eating because they cannot be completely removed. After the first fillet is cut out, you can see that the sailfish's dorsal fin is held together by muscles and tissue 
connected to the skeletal system. Removing them will be much easier and less labour-intensive during the filleting process. Next, separate the bones of the fish from the remaining fillet. At this point, separating the bones is much easier. Sailfit's abdomen, which has membranes containing internal organs, will be gently removed by the chef using a knife. The next step is to remove the sailfish's skin. They are quite smooth, and the outside texture is small scales. The inside is a strong and flexible muscle layer. When removing the skin, chefs often carefully filter out those muscle fibers. Finally, the chef will cut the sailfish meat into traditional sashimi slices and have them ready for diners to enjoy. Sailfish meat is a nutritious food source and brings many health benefits. In particular, it contains a lot of omega-3 fatty acids, which help protect the heart, reduce inflammation and improve brain function. In addition, sailfish meat also provides many important vitamins and minerals such as vitamin B12, vitamin D, selenium, zinc, and magnesium, which help strengthen the immune system and maintain overall health. 